We've talked about the two big categories of compounds, ionic, molecular. I guess we could call metallic a third category, things that are held together with metallic bonds. So um, what did we say about molecular compounds versus ionic compounds? Oh, I just gave it away. What's, what's the big deal with molecular compounds? They have molecules. Yeah. So when we look at C6H12O6, C6H12, O6. We can actually isolate a piece of matter that is six carbon atoms, 12 hydrogen atoms, and six oxygen atoms. And it's a distinct unit. And so we have, and I'll do that. Um, the term discrete is often used um, to describe something that sort of stands alone. So it's discrete, it's distinct, it's a unit. And in ionic compounds, what do we have? We don't have molecules. We don't have discrete units. What do we have instead? Describe what an ionic compound looks like at an atomic level. It's not molecules, right? It's this, yeah, it's this whole big sort of scaffolding. Um, if, if you've ever seen the scaffolding on, side of, on a building that's being worked on, um, you know, or a window washer scaffolding or anything like that, it's this entire framework of attraction and repulsion that, that runs throughout the material. And it's very different than these discrete units, the molecules. Well... Now we get these weirdos. You know, every time we've got like a nice solid rule um, in chemistry, we have something that sort of breaks the rule. And what we have are covalent network compounds. So we have a few covalent compounds that don't form molecules. They actually are not made of individual molecules. And they form these three-dimensional lattice structures, and it, it looks a lot like an ionic compound at an atomic level. So silicone dioxide is the, the best example. Do you know what silicone dioxide is? It's a common substance. You have touched it. I can guarantee you've all touched it. Sand. Sand is mostly composed of silicon dioxide. Um, it's a really common mineral on the surface of the earth. Um, quartz is a sil what's called a silicate mineral. Um, the, the weird thing to wrap your head around when you take any kind of geology class is they'll say, well, oxygen is one of the most common elements in earth's crust. And you go, huh? Because how do we think of oxygen? It's yeah, as a gas, as a, as a gas that we breathe in. But it occurs in many, many rocks. So sandstone that you've picked up out of Beaver Creek and, and skipped rocks with, that sandstone has got a lot of oxygen in it because it's mostly little chunks of silicon dioxide. Um, it's, it's got, again, no distinct units. So the formula is really just the smallest whole number ratio. It's not like a molecular compound, but we name it like it's a molecular compound. So really, what do I expect you to know about this? That they exist. I'm not going to ask you to distinguish them. Um, functionally, if you try, so imagine, we'll do a thought experiment here. Does, can you melt sand over a candle flame, do you think? No. Can you melt most molecular compounds over a candle flame? Yeah, you did it. You melted sugar and salicylic acid, and, or not salicylic, um, phenyl salicylate, and you melted um, citric acid. These behave more like ionic compounds in terms of their melting points. They are not conductive like ionic compounds because they're not individual ions. Um, but in terms of the bonds between the units, they behave a lot like an ionic compound because they've got those forces of attraction that run in all directions through the material. When we go to the Carnegie Museum, um, and we'll probably do that in April, 
Um, we do a trip, we typically take chem classes, the biology classes, and sometimes the environmental classes. Um, the chem classes go for the Hall of Minerals, and we look at the, the external structure of minerals based on their chemical and atomic composition. And silicon dioxide is one that will show up there. Um, so, kind of neat. So, that's really all I expect you to know about covalent network compounds. Acids. We will do an entire chapter on acid and base chemistry towards the end of the year. Um, this is what most people think of when they think of chemistry. This is the cool kind of chemistry. Like, cool, we can eat stuff with acids. Acids don't actually eat anything. Um, they do corrode some surfaces, but um, acid doesn't actually eat through stuff. So acids are molecular compounds, um, and they're actually typically aqueous solutions of molecular compounds. What does aqueous mean? Water, right. And if you're in Spanish, you'll recognize agua, and you'll probably recognize further the Latin um, prefix aqua, because they're all is it Romance languages. <coughs> Latin is related to Spanish, is related to Italian. Um, there's a whole family of languages there, and they have a lot of cognates, things that sound alike. So um, an aqueous solution is a water-based water solution of a given thing. So there are two kinds of acids. There are binary acids, there are oxy acids. Again, chemists, so creative. What do you think is true of a binary acid? Made up of two things. <laughs> yeah, um, two elements. Um, the most common one is one that you are all carrying around a small bag of right now. What kind of acid are you carrying around a small bag of right now? Stomach acid, which is primarily what? It is hydrochloric acid, HCl. It's a hydrogen and a chlorine covalently bound. You get an aqueous solution of HCl. Oops, hydrochloric acid. Aqueous solution of hydrochloric acid is, of HCl is hydrochloric acid. Um, hydrochloric acid, when it's not in aqueous solution, occurs as a gas, um, and it's a very, very nasty gas. You would not want to walk into a cloud of this stuff. The other kind of, the other big category of acid that we'll talk about are oxy acids. Guess what those have in them? Oxygen. Yes, again, like I said, very creative. They are oxygen containing. And a good example of that, the, the oxy acids typically have three parts. So HNO3 is a hydrogen covalently bound basically to a nitrate ion, and that's nitric acid. Um, if you look at your ion reference sheet and you look at the polyatomic ions, a lot of those oxyanions have an associated acid. So for sulfuric acid, what is the associated oxyanion? Sulfate. For nitric acid, the associated um, Oxyanion is the nitrate ion. So, how many of you have ever put acetic acid on your french fries? I love acetic acid on my french fries. So, you've all figured out. Um, acetic acid is the primary ingredient in vinegar. Yeah. Um, apple cider vinegar is mostly acetic acid. And acetic acid is, let's see if I can do this off the top of my head without looking, HCH3COO. <clears throat> and household vinegar is typically about a 5% solution of acetic acid. What's the associated oxyanion? Don't yell it out. Find it on your ion reference. Compare notes with a friend. See if they have the same answer you do. 